Shalom. First and foremost, call Loyum, Wakaba, La Yahawa, Bashim, Yao Shai, Bashim, Arachat Wadash, Shabbat Shalom. Double honest to my teachers, the elder apostles of the great millstone who rule well. Peace, blessings, and salutations to the hopeful elect tabernacle of David that are scattered abroad. And I just want to simply say this a lot of uh, newer brothers. You know, men that we see, you know, springing up, popping up. Um, you know, some of them that are not showing the proper attitude and respect towards his ministry. Simply understand that you ought to understand what you are involved with and what you are come into. That way, you'll finally understand that this is not something all willy-nilly that you just come into like it's some type of, you know, secular movement. Uh, this ain't the Black Panther Party. This ain't the RBG movement. This ain't the New Wabians. This is none of that. All right, this is the church of the firstborn. All right. This is the tabernacle of David being built. So this is clearly from the heavenly realm. So we really need to be humble and move with fear in this thing. And that's one of the things that you should consider, especially if you new coming into the faith. Understand what you are come into. Those other movements out there, this ain't that. We have a standard. We have an order. We have a way of conduct. So I want to start here in Hebrews 12, verse 22. And it says, but you are come unto Mount Zion and unto the city of the living power. The heavenly Jerusalem. And to an un innumerable company of angels. Because we have messengers in unseen places. But the ones that are seen are the prophets. Are right, angels on a mission in human flesh. Going through the human experience. These, these men that are a part of this. At one point in time, they were back in the reincarnation ages ago, millenniums ago, prophesying. Thus saith the Lord. Like the Lord told Daniel to stand in his lot. And basically in the latter days, you know, he was going to do what he did. Because, you know, if the Lord ordained you a prophet, you are always going to be a prophet. And that all started in the heavens. The Lord has a relation, a, a relationship with these men in the heavens. What did he tell um, Jeremiah? Before you even came out of the belly, I knew you and sanctified you and ordained you to be a prophet to the nations. So these men were sanctified for the Lord from the very beginning. All right. So how should your attitude be? Because this is your company. And it's not to, you know, put ourselves up on a level because I don't know who I am. You know, I'm just doing a task that the Lord gave to me. And I fear him. And I acknowledge that I've been taught by men that the Lord set up. And the word angel just simply means messenger. Let's look up that word angels. Because that's what we are. We're a company of angels. Jim, that's why Great Millstone pushed prophecy so heavy. Because we're 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 just uh messengers. Messengers to the nation of Israel. And the word is uh Angelas, 
and it says a messenger envoy one who was sent an angel a messenger from the most high all right and the prophets are would be considered angels and when you go here to uh second Ezra one you go down to the last verse and it says and now father and this is uh in the um revised standard uh version i couldn't find a kjv on this site but um, if you go to the KJV version, it's going to say that these uh, ancient prophets are also called the angel of the Lord. This translation uses the word messenger, showing you that it's uh, interchangeable. All right. And you have the messengers that have celestial ability because they are celestial. You got the celestial angels. And then you have the terrestrial angels, which are the men of the Lord that you see on the highways and byways. All right breaking down these prophecies to you so it says and now father look with pride and see the people coming from the east to them i will give as leaders abraham isaac and jacob and hosea or hosea uh, hawashai and amos and micah and joel and obadiah and jonah and nahum and habakkuk zephaniah haggai zachariah and malachi also told um david in there as well that would die because the psalms are filled with uh not just songs and wisdom but also with prophecies as well all right which is also called the messenger of the lord or you can uh, replace messenger with angel so this is what you're coming into you this is your company all right messengers all right men who are sent from the most high so move like it man have that have that respect okay and yeah we in the flesh so you know we're you know the apostles the elders the bishops you know they're just you know simply men you know we all are in in, in uh sinful flesh you know and and you know, being in his flesh, you are tempted with sin. You do have uh, desires that you have to fight off. We're not perfect. We, we sin. Which is why we have uh, grace through Yahweh Shai. But it's not to be taken lightly that this is what you are a part of once you come into this thing. The Lord called you with a holy calling. All right, and he brought you into heavenly Jerusalem to an innumerable, innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly, the general gathering and church of the firstborn, Yahawashai, which are written in heaven. Remember, the Lord told his uh, apostles, rejoice not because these uh, spirits are subject to you, but rather that you rejoice because your names are written in heaven. He told these men that. And by our faith, we believe that those men are back today. All right. We're building a church. But certain dudes don't understand the magnitude of this. So they come in with, you know, just a, a, a carefree attitude. And they feel as though they can just uh, come into this thing and do what they want. You know, they can uh, start building upon, you know, what the Lord ordained their own way. You know, they can uh, treat men how they want to treat uh, uh, treat people. You know? Nah, man. Once you come into this thing, you have to conduct yourself as it becomes the gospel, man. Become a new creature. Or you, you submit yourself to the elder and, 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 you know, humble yourself. You learn. You, you, you absorb. And once you built up enough in the faith, you go out there and you do what, what they taught you. Because like uh, Apostle Paul um, charged to Timothy, commit this to faithful men who will be able to uh, teach others also. And that's all we're to do is really to teach. And everybody that's involved, we're all fellow laborers. And the Most High ordained this, uh, this, this labor, this husbandry. And guess what? We're entered into other men's labors. 
because those prophets that are back today, they laid the groundwork even back then. All right. Because by the time the Lord came upon the scene, they already had the written word, which was from the Most High through those holy men that were um, filled with the Holy Spirit, the inspiration of the Most High. And they prophesied. They, they um, preached the gospel. All right. And, and the fruit wasn't gathered from that until later on. So those prop those ancient prophets they died not receiving of uh, that particular fruit of 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 the seed that they sowed the, the the labor that they put in. All right, we entered into that. So real quick, let me go to the art Bible real quick. Like I said, the Lord rose; he, he's risen up. Those men of the Lord. And they're back today. That's why we believe it started with Abba because, you know, the Lord putting the spirit on him to go out there and also to preach Yahweh Shai when all the other guys were just preaching the Old Testament. You know, they those dudes received the, um, you know, the flesh, the sinews and all that, but they didn't have the breath. We believe the breath was put into Abba. And Abba went out there and, you know, he sparked up. You know, what it's become today, you know, this ministry. Just like John the Baptist, when he came on the scene, he paved the way for the um, the ministry of Yahweh Shai. And he passed the baton to Yahweh Shai, you know, after the baptism. Let's go to uh, Sirach 36. And verse... Um, I start at verse... Uh, 12 it says O Lord have mercy upon the people that is called by thy name and upon Israel and whom thou has named thy firstborn O be merciful unto Jerusalem thy holy city the place of thy rest fill Zion with thine unspeakable oracles now, what is an oracle it says a priest or priest is acting as a medium through whom advice or prophecy was sought from gods, from the gods in classical antiquity. A response or message given by an oracle, typically one that is ambiguous or obscure. Down here, an oracle is a person or agency considered to provide wise and insightful counsel or prophetic predictions, most notably including precognition of the future inspired by deities which ultimately the prophets were inspired by the most high all right the holy spirit as such it is form of it is a form of divination yeah from the heavenly father okay the most hey, um was that um psalm 68 where it says uh the lord gave the word blessed are the company of those that published it and matter of fact when you go there I believe it was Psalm 68 and uh the 11 yeah Psalm 68 and 11 says the Lord gave the word great was the company of those that published it so we know the word came directly from the Lord himself when he spake through the mouth of his prophets on earth Look up that word company, which uh, the Hebrew word is uh, tazaba, which basically means host. Right, that which goes forth, army, war, warfare, host. And we're in the midst of a warfare. We're in a spiritual warfare. Right, that's why we do not, even though we're in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. All right. Uh, army, host, host of organized army, host of angels. All right, we're a host of, of messengers. All right. And we're in camps. Armies, you know, military men, they set up camps. Okay. And we're soldiers of, of Yahweh Shai. He, he, he called us, you know, he enlisted us to be a good soldier. 
so we don't get entangled with the affairs of this life, how we may please him, all right, as, as a soldier in Yahweh Shai. So going back, it's, and then it says, uh, those that published, right? So you had a company of angels, a host. And then in the Hebrew for publish is from the word Hebrew word Bashar, which means to bear news, bear tidings, publish, preach, show forth. All right. And that's what the, the pastors, the prophets, the true prophets that are sent, the messengers, they're sent to bring uh, tidings, news to our people. And we're the main ones pushing uh, the, the, the real true gospel. All right. We're telling you the good news that our Lord is coming back to set up a kingdom where it's going to be nothing but righteousness. It's going to be a righteous standard. That the other nations are going to be uh, brought down and they're no longer going to have power to destroy the earth that they're currently destroying now. That we will no longer be in captivity. We will never. We will no longer be oppressed. That we're going to be a, a priest, a nation of kings and priests. All right, that's what we're preaching. That's our message. In order for that to uh, happen, the Lord's got to uh, take down the ones currently in power, which happens to be Esau, Edom. Esau being the end of the world and Jacob's the beginning that follows. So Esau is going to be brought down and that's good news. And who've been on the front lines, you know, bringing this out? You had starting with Alba down to the men that he taught and they you know learned up under him and they took the baton and they went out there and you hear the, the apostles speak highly of those men because they acknowledged that they entered into those men's labors and guess what we entered into their labors all right and i'm gonna get that when yahweh shai had said what he said so this is the company man so let's uh go back and read this, and then we're going to go to uh, the book of John. It says, And thy people with thy glory give testimony unto those that thou hast possessed from the beginning, all right, to the law and to the testimony, which the Lord gave that to his men, his elect. All right, surely he will do nothing but reveal of his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. A testimony means a witness, and ultimately, like it says in Revelation 19, the testimony of our Lord is the spirit of prophecy. And, and we know that the, 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 um, the prophets, the spirit of the prophets are subject to the prophets. So whenever the Lord raised them up in their generations, they're going to receive the testimony. They're going to have the spirit of prophecy upon them. So they always come back in a lot. That's why he told Daniel to stand in his lot until the latter days. I believe uh, the same thing was told to um, John the Revelator. That he was going to prophesy again, you know, amongst, you know, uh, different tongues, nations, you know, so on and so forth. It says, and raise up prophets that have been in thy name. Reward them that wait for thee and let thy prophets be found faithful. Okay. So let's go to uh, John. Four and uh, was it thirty-eight? All right, and this is him going into talking about the uh, the harvest. All right, this is uh, John four and thirty-four. Yahweh Shai said unto them, My meat is to do the will of Him that sent me and to finish His work. All right, and this is the, the work that the Lord ordained. This is, hey, we like the apostle to ours once said, we're working for the king of the universe, man. So whatever the Lord brought us into, we got to finish that. And guess what? Your own contract, as long as you, you know, you've uh, woken up to this, the Lord called you and opened up your eyes. All right, and you drank of that cup. You made that covenant, that agreement. Won't you put your hand to the plow? So you're under contract. You got to finish this uh, work. 
It says, Say not ye, there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. Behold, I said to you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. It's already laid out. Now you need to go out there and, and work and gather. All right, and he that reapeth receiveth wages and gather fruit unto life eternal, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. All right, the the, the, the prophets, the men who who, who sowed, who, who laid the groundwork, who broke the ground and sowed the seeds, and those who went out there and, and gathered, all rejoicing, man, because the work is being done. And and guess what? After that work is finished, the Lord's going to reward you. It says, and herein is that saying true, one soweth and another reapeth. I sent you to reap that whereupon or whereon you bestowed no labor. Other men labored and you are entered into their labors. And think about it like the prophets of old that uh that already written down, you know, the prophecies and things pertaining to the gospel of Yahweh Shai and the things that he would come to fulfill. Those men went through persecution. They got uh, hands put on them. They got thrown in the stocks in the prisons. They got stoned to death. And didn't really get to live to see the fruits of their uh, labors. But guess what? They did come back in the latter days. All right. And, 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 and did uh, continue to labor. And the fruit is being railed in. And all brothers coming in, you're their fruit. Okay? So you got you to gotta see it that way, that, hey, you're entering into a company of angels who actually were part of a labor that, that, were, that was ordained from the Most High. So you don't come in with just a, any old attitude. Being, you know, lifted up with pride. Doing what the hell you want to do. Not respecting the authority or the order. Now, real quick. I want to go to this commentary because I was reading it. I believe it was from Matthew Henry. And I'm going to scroll down to where he actually um, expounds. On this particular verse. It was pretty interesting. Here we go. Was it... Uh... Let me scroll down some more. I think it's further down. Here we go. Yep. It says, uh, right here it says, by the decree of the Most High Power revealed in the prophecies of the Old Testament, now was the time when the gathering of the people should be to a Mashiach. All right, Genesis 49 and 10, talking about uh, Shiloh. And which uh, we waiting on Shiloh to return. He's going to gather his elect. Because the elect are being uh, sifted from among all nations first by, by way of the word. That's why there's camps all over the planet, man. All right, brothers. And then you got, you know, sisters that are also following. That I believe that are worldwide. And they don't look like your typical uh, Negro. They're amongst all nations. So some of them are going to even look like other nations. And those that are not spiritual won't be able to receive it. All right. That's why John, when he saw that great multitude, you know, he had a question like, who, who, who are these? You know. It says, uh, when great accessions should be made to the church and the bounds of it should be enlarged, therefore it was time for them to be busy. All right. Meaning, you know, we got to be always abounding in the work and the labor. That's why the apostle always you know, push to be diligent. No hands in the pockets, man. And if you lukewarm, the Lord don't need you. He's gonna he's gonna spit you out. 
says it is a great encouragement to us to engage in any work for the most high and whatever office that you um have been given engage in that work man and do it with all light might he says if we understand by the signs of the times that this is the proper season for that work well then it will prosper and there should be a lot of you know brothers you know filling up them camps all over the place Especially seeing the times that we're in now. We had the final stretch, man. It says, by the disposition of men, John the Baptist had made ready a people prepared for the Lord. Now, I mentioned John the Baptist, who was Elijah, the prophet coming back. All right. Uh, Luke 1 and 17, it says, since he began to preach the kingdom of God, every man pressed into it. Luke 16, 16, the law and the prophets were until John. Since that time, the kingdom of the Most High is preached and every man presses into it. You know, so they entered in, starting with the baptism of John. And that's why when Yahweh Shai came on the scene, he said, I must uh, decrease and he must increase. All right. Basically, I did what I was supposed to do. And now I'm handing the baton over to the Lord. This is this is this is his. I was just set up to prepare the way for him. But you had you got clown as dudes in a circumcision that we're all black talking about that john wasn't in the truth but if it wasn't for john all right you wouldn't be doing what you're doing it says this therefore was a time for the preachers of the gospel to apply themselves to their work with the utmost vigor to thrust in their sickle when the harvest was ripe revelation 14 15 which that's going to be uh, uh fulfilled when the lord uh comes back all right, we're well, gonna have the angels doing the reaping. It says it is necessary to work now. Pity that such a season should be should be let slip. If the corn that is ripe be not ripe, it will shed and be lost, and the fowls will pick it up. The souls that are under convictions and have some good in the inclinations be not helped now. Their hopeful beginnings will come to nothing, and they will be a prey to pretenders and you know, false prophets. That's why we're out there in the midst of this labor. We're constantly um, giving warning about a lot, a lot of these uh, wolves in sheep's clothing. A lot of these uh, wicked souls, man, that's that's here to, to lie in wait to deceive. A lot of hirelings that have been brought in, a lot of false prophets. Okay. A lot of uh, pretenders, evil uh, men and seducers. All right seducing uh, uh brothers with with false doctrines it says it was also easy to work now when the people's hearts are prepared the work will be done suddenly let me uh now let me jump down real quick Yep, here we go. It says that is what that is was easy work and work that was half done to their hands by those that were going before them, one soweth and another reapeth. Verse thirty seven, verse thirty eight. This sometimes denotes a grievous judgment upon him that souls. <clears throat> Micah six and fifteen, thou shalt sow, but thou shalt not reap. Thou shalt tread the olives, thou sh but thou shalt not anoint thee with oil and sweet wine, but shalt not drink wine. Uh, Deuteronomy 28, 30, thou shalt be trophil. Okay, um, that's going into the curse. It says, thou shalt sow, and another shall reap, as Deuteronomy 6 and 11, and houses full of good things, which thou, thou fillest not, and wells digged, which thou digs not, vineyards and olive trees, which thou plantest not, when thou shalt have eaten and be full. Houses full of good things which thou fillest not. So here Moses and the prophets and John the Baptist had paved the way to the gospel, had sown the good seed which the New Testament ministers did in effect, but gathered the fruit of. I send you to reap that whereon you bestowed in comparison no labor. This intimates two things concerning the Old Testament ministry. First, that it was very much short of the New Testament ministry. Moses and the prophets sold, but they could not be said to reap so little did they see the fruit of their labors their writings have done so much 
more good since they left us than ever their preaching did. And because we still have this word to this very day. And that's what, you know, when Yahusha and the apostles on the scene, when they were in the synagogues, they were they were reading the law and the prophets and the Psalms. And, you know, those who were um of the elect, you know, they read it and the 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 uh the Holy Spirit, the, the comforter supped with them and they were brought in. All right. It says, secondly, that it was very serviceable to the New Testament ministry and made way for it. The writings of the prophets, which were read in the synagogues every Sabbath day, raised people's expectations of the Messiah, Mashiach, and so prepared them to bid him welcome. Had it not been for the seed sown by the prophets, this Samaritan woman could not have said, we know that Messiah cometh. In which, you know, she was a heathen planted in the land. You know, yeah, heathens in uh, Samaria for a minute. So you already know that they were, you know, reading our scrolls and they thought they was a part of that. So, of course, you would know about that. But, uh, you know, the Lord turned her down when you read that uh, account in, that, in, in this same uh, chapter. All right. She wasn't an Israelite. This was this is for the, the Israelites. It says the writings of the Old Testament are in some respects more useful to us than they could be to those to whom they were first written because better understood by the accomplishment of them, all right? First Peter 1 and 12, unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. Right, even angels desire to look into it. That's why the Lord told them, um, let me see if I can find it. I believe it's in a loop. But he said, um, that basically men had desire to, to, to look into the things that you hear and see. Let's see if I can find that. Yep. Luke 10 and 24 says, For I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see those things which you see and have not seen them, and to hear those things which you hear and have not heard them. And that's what made them, uh, you know, blessed and, 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 you know, they were great. They were greater than the other, uh, um, you know, they, they, they were seen as greater because, you know, they received the understanding of what the prophets prophesied. And a lot of those prophets, you know, the most I put it in a spirit to speak what they spoke and write it, have it written down, but they didn't truly fully understand. But in this time, it was expounded upon them to, to the disciples. Because the Lord was there to open their eyes and, and, and he broke bread with them. Okay. And it was hidden. This mystery was hidden for ages. Even all those, uh, you know, what they would consider prudent, you know, wise according to that world, even they were blinded. Even they were were foolish. They didn't know the uh, uh, the secrets. They didn't know the, these prophecies. And they didn't. And that. And in the Lord's time, they a lot of them didn't believe that Yahweh Shai was the Mashiach, the Son of the Most High. They were blinded. So the Lord, you know, hid it from the prudent and and, and gave it to the babes made them uh prophets and servants evangelists and, and and teachers and that's what the lord is using to build up the church all right the the the, the, the and this is your company so hey it's, it, this is way bigger than just you know you me any individual man this is from the heavens man this is what this is what you'll come into Okay, um, this is Hebrews 4, 2, for unto us the gospel preach as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Uh, Romans 16, 25, 26, now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Yahweh Shai Mashiach according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began 
but now is made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandments of the everlasting power made known to all nations for the obedience of faith you see so you know we have the scriptures which was by the prophets and the lord revealed these mysteries uh to us to understand it starting with our elders apostles and and even their elders all right the lord had to uh you know he was the only one worthy to uh, loose the seals break open the seals of, of the book and now you know we have it and the lord only sealed it among his disciples his chosen that's why only 144,000 can now uh learn this song so this is what we're come into man i don't take this lightly at all all right you understand where you at <laughs> you know and this, this and this, we take this very serious man this is life and death yahweh shy blood purchased you so you're under contract and if you you know you trample his his blood and account it as if it's not precious the only thing you got left to look forward to is that fiery indignation so hey you know no time to be unruly you know uh or, or disorderly no time to be uh uh you know slothful curse be he that doeth the work of the most high deceitfully so anyway you know i i, I just want to uh do a lesson on this you know, that was on my spirit especially seeing what's going on right now and you know the uh, the elder brothers and apostles having to do exhortation and you know getting on uh you know younger brothers you know and i consider myself a younger brother too you know i understand you know brothers and sisters refer to me as a zaquan elder i don't see myself as an elder i'm still learning as i as i grow all right yeah 12 years i mean that's a little bit of time but you know i, I in comparison to the men before me you know that's that's really nothing all right I've un I, I acknowledge that I've entered into those men's labors and what they had to uh, go through, the toil that they had to go through. All right, going through the humiliation and denying themselves, you know, making that sacrifice so that we can have what's, what's uh, needful. So anyway, you know, Lord willing, this was edifying. I'm give all praise to y'all. Bashim, y'all was shy. Now to the next lesson, Shalom.